Have you heard about this parasite that can control your brain? Yeah, sounds totally crazy. It does, doesn't it? Anyway, I gotta go. Catch you later. Take care. Spooky. But first, a little recap. Toxoplasma gondii is a single-celled parasite. Its definitive hosts are members of the cat family, but intermediate hosts can be almost all bird and mammal species. This includes your pet hamster, your cute dog, the hot chick next door, and even yourself. An estimated one-third of Earth's human population is infected. Toxoplasma is f***ing everywhere. Behind you! Eating undercooked meat and unwashed fruit and vegetables is the main source of human infection. Contact with cats, on the other hand, is a very rare cause of toxoplasmosis, ranked somewhere between um, eating crayons and licking the ears of Santa Claus. Although the disease is capable of causing serious health issues in rare cases, most of the time it runs its course without ever being noticed, like happiness in marriage. The immune system stops the rampant parasite, which in turn recedes into microscopic cysts inside your body, but mainly in your brain. This stage, called latent toxoplasmosis, is permanent, but it comes with no symptoms whatsoever. Or does it? This is George, a generic rodent. He likes solving crossword puzzles and chewing on bedsheets. George is not infected by toxoplasma. This is Alistair Pearson, a massive soccer fan and sewer diver. He has latent toxoplasmosis. They both appear happy and healthy at first glance, but as we start reading their blogs, something uncanny strikes us. George, as any decent rodent, is afraid of cats and is revolted by the smell of cat urine, while Alistair Pearson... Cat peace! Toxoplasma seems to have eliminated its instinctive fear of its natural predator, which helps the parasite reach its final host faster. The phenomenon is called fatal attraction. Since people can be intermediate hosts just like rats, scientists were eager to find out if toxoplasma could modify human behavior as well. The human brain is very different from that of a rat, well, most of them are, so it seemed possible that there was no behavior modification at all. After all, we've been living together with this parasite for thousands of years, and we haven't noticed any blatantly obvious changes. Infected John hates cat piss thrown at his face as much as uninfected Fred. Big differences are easy to spot, but if the changes are minute, they will blend into the natural variety of human behavior. How can we find out then? Statistics was invented for two main reasons. One, to bore the f out of university students, and two, to discover patterns and tendencies in groups of large numbers that are otherwise invisible when looking at individuals. Many research teams have studied latent toxoplasmosis and its connection with various human traits, and interesting results keep popping up by the day. It appears that people involved in traffic accidents have latent toxoplasmosis in larger numbers than the population average. What the hell? Does toxo make you unlucky then, or what? Or maybe it lowers your reaction time, making it less likely for you to avoid danger. Hey, catch! Or maybe it turns you into one of those assholes who think they are filming the next Fast and Furious every time they sit behind the wheel, only to end up starring in a Russian dashcam video. Idiot toxoplasma driver. Studies have shown that, yes, people with the infection have slower reflexes on average than people without. Also, toxopositive men tend to be more competitive and more aggressive than toxonegative ones. Same thing can be said about being suspicious and jealous. Women with latent toxoplasmosis, however, appear to be more kind-hearted and more forgiving in general than their disease-free counterparts. 
In both genders, toxopositivity can be linked to decreased fear in scary situations, suggesting impaired self-preserving behavior. You remind me of my ex-husband. Not scary enough? How about the fact that schizophrenics have a greater proportion of the infected among them than the society average? Or that suicide rates among women are higher if they are toxopositive? Everything points towards a clear, obvious conclusion, right? Nah, not really. Being toxopositive will not automatically make you a competitive, jealous, slow-handed schizophrenic with suicidal thoughts and no fear of tax evading ghosts. Just as being uninfected will not guarantee you'll be free of any of these traits. There's a fair amount of all sorts of behavior both in infected and uninfected groups, but the infected group displays some of them slightly more often. And why is that so? We are not sure because what we have is correlation, not causation. Let me elaborate. If we examine a group of 10 men displaying a certain trait, say, having two heads, and we find that six of them have three testicles, while single-headed folks have three testicles only in four out of 10 cases, we can say that two-headedness correlates with three balls in us. This could mean that three balls contribute to having two heads, but it could also mean that an excess head is a factor in developing three balls. And there's a third option as well, Namely that the two phenomena are totally unrelated to each other, but have a common cause, such as a stupid cartoonist running out of proper ideas for a demonstration. So does toxoplasmosis make you a reckless driver, or does recklessness make you more prone to contracting the disease because you don't give a damn about hygiene and eat live mice with dirt? Gluten-free, of course. More and more scientists are hopping on the toxoplasma wagon to find out how the parasite affects the human brain and to give definite answers to such questions. As the number of studies increases, conflicting results also arise. Some scientists found no change in reaction times whatsoever, others recorded increased suspiciousness in urban women but not men, and decreased suspiciousness in rural women but not men. Seriously, what's going on? The human brain is the most complex biological information processing unit we know of. It's more complex than the storyline of Lost. Human behavior is influenced by so many factors that it's hard to isolate and examine a single one without all the others constantly messing up the experiment. If the factor we are looking at doesn't have a large enough effect to overpower everything else, well, good luck with your research. What you need is to grab identical test subjects from alternate universes with the same exact past experiences, disease history, marital status and sexual fetishes and then infect some of them with toxoplasma and see if it makes any difference. While fetching your twin from a parallel reality is as easy as sneezing a steam engine, Why you? you can't just go around infecting people with toxoplasma. The ethical committee of ethical something would beat the living shit out of you. Let's just give scientists some time to figure this whole toxoplasma thing out. What we know so far is that latent toxoplasmosis may be a contributing factor in the development of certain human behavior patterns. How exactly this happens is not yet known. But contributing factors do not act in isolation. Many of them band together and it's their summation that results in the actual behavior change, or dare I say it, mental issue, which can be very different from what an individual factor predisposes you to. Latent toxoplasmosis is just one drop in a sea of factors the average person doesn't even slightly worry about otherwise. So stop f***ing panicking, dammit! I'm sorry, I had an espresso this morning. You are mind controlled by toxoplasma as much as you are by having seen Bambi's mom get killed when you were six years old. <laughs> both may be behavior modifying factors, both may contribute to your running red lights or f***ing up your marriage. But can you really put the blame on them for your actions? Listen, officer, I had a terrible movie experience 30 years ago and there's a parasite in my brain. While you don't have to crap your pants every time you hear the name of the disease, by no means should you take it lightly either. 
Toxoplasma is still a parasite able to cause serious damage if the circumstances are right. Or wrong. Your best shot at avoiding it is good personal and food hygiene. The cat is not much of a threat, so if you want to kick it out of the house, find another excuse. Idiot cat drank my vodka. Summing it up. Latent toxoplasmosis influences the behavior of rodents. Its effects on the human psyche, however, are less obvious and difficult to study. The parasite may be one of the many, many factors shaping risk-taking behavior, trust, novelty-seeking, reaction time, and the development of schizophrenia. No need to panic, toxopositivity is not guaranteed to make you mad or mind-controlled by the devil. You are still you. Health. It makes you live longer. But I want to be George Clooney. The technical information in this video was fact-checked by Dr. Lajos Rózsa, biologist, parasitologist. I thank him very much.